Let's go ahead and add our first new song to Live Tracker with an audio track. This is the most basic type of song that we're going to do. Here we are in the main screen of Live Tracker. Let me hide this. This is the default layout. And all we're going to do is press plus right here at the top and then give our song a name. I'm just going to call it Song A. Oh, I had already done that in a previous, so I'm just going to call this Song D. It doesn't really matter what the name is. Now we'll go ahead and we're in our track view. So here we see save changes and back. This means we're in the space where we're editing our song. Right down here it says audio track. I'm just going to press plus. I'm going to go ahead and find my song. I'm going to use this mp4 file. Pretty much any audio file does work with this. Um, you know, I, I haven't had any problems with anything. All the common formats tend to work well. You get some different options here. First, we've got the length. We can see that here in the sequencer view. We can zoom in and out. We can see the length of this particular song. We can then change the audio file if we need to import such an audio file. We can do that. We can go ahead, change the audio subgroup. So by default, it's going to go out of our main output here in Live Tracker. We can apply some EQ, compression, or reverb. We'll talk about that later. Um, but one thing that's important to know is, say I go here to import. I just want to show you this. Right here in our PC Documents Live Tracker or Mac Documents Live Tracker, each song, as we're making them, gets brought in to this Documents folder. So even though I grabbed this audio file from a completely different location on the computer, it gets copied into my live tracker world into my file system here so that it's always with all my files for live tracker it's not going to get lost okay so know that they're always copied in here to match whatever you've got into live tracker here now on the topic of the audio subgroups live tracker is compatible with all sorts of different audio devices but you do need to go into your preferences to audio and set them up uh, if you're using, depending on what interface you're using. Live Tracker can work with uh, basic audio interfaces, the headphone out on your computer, or if you want to send out a lot of tracks, a lot of the popular digital mixing consoles are also compatible. And so you select your audio driver, uh, whichever one you want, such as ASIO for multi-track stuff. Um, but I'm just going to use Windows Audio here because I'm just using this Behringer interface with two channels. And then I'm good to go. You can then go ahead, set up your subgroups here at the bottom. You can name it. And then just put in which audio outputs um, each subgroup goes to and you'll be good to go. Then you can go ahead. I like to go save changes and back, and then it talks about reloading the song at the bottom there. So I just go to a different song, come forward to song B, press the space bar or play right here. And like that, my music plays. So now I've got a song in here. I have a song that I had previously, and so I can add, go plus to add more songs, more backing tracks, etc. And now I can arrange these in my bank however I desire. So I can just go ahead and I'm able to, uh, to click right here on the end, on the hamburger as they're often called. I can drag these songs around, rearrange them as needed, um, and, and just you know make the set list in the order that I need. And that's about it for audio tracks. With any audio track in the editing portion, you can come in here and have multiple audio tracks coming out of your multiple subgroups. And so you would just add in more audio tracks here by finding those tracks and bringing them in. Uh, hopefully, the easiest way to do it would be if they're all the same length from, from wherever you created your backing tracks. Um, but if they're not, you can go to the sequencer view here and you are able to move those tracks around accordingly so that um, you know that you always have the, the right stuff lined up exactly the right way. Um, you can even turn off snapping to line these up correctly. Anytime you're working in here and you're all done, just make sure to press save changes and back, 
and then you're good to go. Let's hop to our next video and talk about building set lists in LiveTracker.